All right, you should be able to hear me now. I see the bar on the microphone, finally. So let me know for sure that you can hear me now. My computer does this weird thing where I'm usually plugged into a, a large monitor for when I'm working. And then if I unplug from the monitor, if I don't actually sign in and sign out, uh, it keeps like a super tight resolution. Well, not really tight, it's probably not the word. Super high resolution on my tiny laptop screen from the monitor. So like, I forgot to do that. Everything is super tiny. I can't even, I'm like two feet from the laptop. I can't read anything on the screen. Um, so I was, having, <laughs> I was having a hard time making sure everything was working. Um, all right, well, happy Sunday. Man, the last few weeks have been uh, not super fun to say the least. Um, I'm very happy to be here painting again and streaming with you. And so thanks for your patience and sorry that I missed, I don't know, one, two, I, how many weeks did I miss? I don't know. feels like a long time since I, I sat down to paint and certainly sat down to stream. Um, so yeah, I love technology and I despise it in equal measure. I feel exactly the same way. Um, Whew, but yeah, I'm tired, but I'm, I'm happy to be here painting today and, um, and hanging out with you guys. So before I get started, a couple things to show off. Um, I'll show the painting second. So if you've been following on social media, you know that uh, one of the things that I've been doing is I had uh, grayed out productions. I had them make some dice bags with our friendly little painting gorilla here. Um, with 100% uh, of the money going to charity for these bags. Um, and I had eight of them made, one for me, and then seven to, to sell to people for charity. Um, and I'm still waiting on the payment for the last couple people, so I don't know exactly what their total is going to be. But so far, uh, every single person who has purchased one has also chipped in additional money for charity. So we're looking at probably at least $250 uh, donated to um, some animal charities. So probably, um, I'm probably going to split it about 50-50, but between uh, two of the local Arizona ones, um, unless people who buy them have a specific one of the three charities I was considering um, doing. It. So An Arizona Animal Well, Wel can't talk. Arizona Animal Welfare League. Um, which is the largest um, animal shelter in Arizona and does a lot of other things for like anti-animal cruelty. Um, and then the Arizona Pet Project, which is an interesting one where they, uh, they have funds available from the charity and they have volunteers who are going out to different veterinary clinics, um, different adoption places, and they help not only with um, spaying and neutering for pets that are going to be getting adopted or even spraying, spaying and neutering um, people's pets. But also, and the one that really hits home to me, is uh, being there with funds to take care of animals like doing surgeries or other kind of um, needs that the animals have, which families might not be able to pay for. And so to keep people from just dumping their sick pets off because they can't take care of them anymore, um, actually going ahead and paying for those those medical needs that those pets have so that Pets can stay in the people's homes and, uh, you know, you don't have kids who lose one of their best friends because um, their family can't afford the, the veterinary care for the animals. So those are the two charities that I'll probably be uh, splitting the money between. But this is the one that's going to be kept for me. Um, this was the prototype bag that he did. Um, you can tell the difference. I have one of the other ones. Every other one is, is more like this one in terms of where you see you kind of get a second part of the logo up at the top. Um, and then the full logo is a little bit closer to the bottom of the bag. And I'll show you that um, when you close the bag, so for this version of it, you know, part of the gorilla gets a little bit um, pinched up into the, the fold. And so I think on all of the other ones, the ones I'm actually going to send out to the people who bought, um, the full gorilla logo then will be a little bit lower. So then as the bag is kind of full of dice and sitting here, you'll get to see him a little bit better. And then you'll, I mean, there'll be another partial grill up here, but it's all in the, the tight folds of the bag. So um, these are really cool. They're, they're, I was, they're great quality. I was really impressed with the, the work that Michael did uh, in doing these. They're also really good size. I mean, I realize it's a little hard to tell, but I mean, I can take my whole fist and put it in the bag and there is 
know, plenty of room to spare. They got tons of fun pockets inside of them. So you can, a uh, couple different things you can do with these. Um, and by the way, I'm talking about these, I, I know, like I said, they're all spoken for, but um, there's two reasons I'm going ahead and showing them off to you anyway. But uh, they have these fun little pockets where you can either do, like if you have token games, like you play X-Wing or something, maybe you wanna keep your tokens in these pockets. Or <clears throat> maybe if you have different types of dice, I realize 40K doesn't use scatter dice, but that kind of idea. So you have all your D6s in here and you can keep your scatter die or you know whatever kind of special die you have for your game can go in the pockets so that they're easy to, to find. Um, the other thing that I think is actually really cool would, is if you are an RPG player and you're taking your dice bag to role playing night, you can put all your D10s and D4s and all of that stuff can go in the pockets. And then you have this nice soft cotton uh, inner part where you can actually put your mini that you're, you know, if you bring your own mini to, to the game night. So you have him painted and you don't want him like dice banging all around, all around him. You can actually keep him in the center and have all your dice in the, uh, the pockets on the outside, close up your bag, take it with you and you're good to go. So the reason I'm going ahead and showing this off is a couple things. I know um, they kind of sold fast. And so if you, if you kind of caught, if you kind of missed out on it, but you actually were hoping to get on it in on it, send me a message. Uh, if I get enough people who that applies to, uh, I could do a second run of these bags and make another seven or eight of them. Um, so let me know if that's the case. The other thing is that, I mean, they're just nice to have. And if you don't want to have a dice bag with my logo on it, but you want something else, um, grayed out productions. I think on Twitter, I think it's gray like storms is his handle. Um, he makes a lot of cool different designs. So he has some fabric that he always keeps in stock. Things like cool fantasy maps or dungeon tiles or things like that that are on the bag covers lava, all sorts of cool things. Um, you can also custom order fabric and he can make dice bags out of that too. So give him a little shout out because um, he really came through making these nice dice bags. Uh, he gave us a discount um, to uh, be able to give more money to charity for him making them. So um, yeah, he, he was instrumental in getting these done and being able to, to raise some money for worthy causes. <clears throat> so those will all be getting shipped out in the next few days here. Um, there are two of them that have been spoken for. However, I believe that they are actually going into a contest for something. So I don't want to say too much beyond that because I don't want to spill the beans in case the person who is, who is behind that doesn't want that completely getting out. But I will just say if you did miss out there, there might still be a chance for you to win one of the two, uh, two of the bags, one of the two of the bags. Sorry, I'm very tired. My, uh, I'm sounding a little incoherent to myself. <clears throat> All right, so the other thing is, um, the last time I was on stream, I was working on um, the Space Marine. I didn't get super far. I think I pretty much just got the skin done and I was blocking out some of the colors. Um, I've since finished him. Let me pop up on screen the, the color scheme that we're, that we're working on. So kind of doing a Lannister themed color scheme with this guy. So I tried to capture the, you know, the banded, uh, kind of <laughs> where my finger's on screen. I'm like trying to do a green screen thing here with it. So the bands that sort of go along <clears throat> the edge of the black part of the armor, try to mimic that a little bit in the design do some freehand of that. Um, have some of the bright red, but also some of the darker crimson. You can't really see it on the example here, but some of the other Lannister armor example has that darker crimson as part of the red that you start to see as you, you move out from the center of the model. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how he came out. Um, if you remember, um, Pack team jumped on the stream last time while we were working on this, and he said, "Ah, can you do some tattoos on the head?" So we did some some facial and head tattoos on him too. So that guy's part. That guy's done. Head non washable. Um. And yeah, so I have only since since that stream again. I don't know. Was that two weeks ago? Three weeks ago? It feels like forever. Um. Since then, I've actually been able to block out all the colors on the Dreadnought. Play with the focus. Block out all the colors on the Dreadnought. 
himself. And I actually got the gray, the black slash gray painted on uh, the Dreadnought body as well. So it's got all of its different layers and highlights and things like that. You can see it best um, on this like armor right there. You can kind of see the, the fade. Um, we've got all the, the various armaments and things. Hey, Printable Heroes, what's up? Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, there's various guns, arms, all that stuff. So I've got all the, the gray, most of the color blocked out. I don't have the, the um, bronze color is the last thing that I'll do. So that's, none of that's blocked out, but that's because it's going to go on top of the other, a lot of the other color areas. Um, so I, my anticipation is doing a lot more of the banding, you know, on some of the darker areas, some of the black areas and the dark um, wine color areas. But then also, like along these, these large plates here, doing a lot of some of that uh, more intricate design, like what you see around the gorget section of the, um, the Lannister armor that's there. Uh, maybe even paint some lions and things like that onto that, and the, um, the flat shoulder pad areas. So today, my main focus is going to be starting to work on the red. Um, I don't even know that I'll get it done on stream. It's kind of a long process to build up some of those layers. Um, the, the main like technique um, that I'm using for this guy is, is, if you've seen me before, it's not a big surprise doing the glazing, where I build up a lot of underlayers. The underlayers are going to have um, some extreme contrast between the darkest parts and the lightest parts, but then we use some glazing over the top of it to smooth the transitions between everything, knock down some of the brightest layers, and get a lot more um, subtle color. And then we can go in and do some shading and, and darken up some of the shadow areas. So we're going to work on the, uh, the red. And what's interesting for, not interesting so much, but what I did on this guy is the two different red areas. I actually went ahead and highlighted them up or layered them up using the same colors. So even though they're distinctly different reds, I just layered them up. But then when I went back and glazed, Glazing with the bright red versus glazing with the darker red brought it back down to the difference in colors. So we're going to do both red areas with the same layers that we're doing. Uh, the only thing I have to do is, the first thing is I have to um, base coat the edges of these um, weapons, the bolters and little rocket pots that are there. So I need to base coat that red. Hey, thanks. Those uh, somebody found where I, I, the client sent those to me. Um, I'm trying to remember where they said they got them. Now, he he never said, but somebody else found them. One of the major third-party parts um, makers that's over in Europe. Uh, if you shout, if you know any of those, and you throw a couple of them up, um, I'm sure I can uh, recognize by name, but I don't remember off the top of my head where they got them. I'm gonna take this the Lannister picture off. We know what it looks like. We know what we're shooting for. Wasn't Cyborg um, something with armor in its name? Maybe like Armor Cast. Is that a company that makes something like that? So I'm just going to start off, like I said, just base coating the these weapons here. So 
Sorry, the lighting's kind of crummy. I'm not sure what's going on. It's a little better. I'll see it when we get more detailed stuff if uh, I need to adjust the zoom. You know, it's kind of interesting. You, you talk to painters, especially people who've been painting for a really long time like me You'd be pretty. You'd be pretty hard pressed to find somebody who has never painted a Space Marine before. Um, and I certainly have painted them in the past, but I think this will be the first. I mean, well, I shouldn't say this will be. This was the first Space Marine I think I've painted since 2012. It's been quite a long time since I tackled a Space Marine. I really haven't done a lot of sci-fi stuff in quite a while. I used to play 40k. I had a whole Thousand Suns slash Zinch army. Back in the day when they had, like the demons weren't a separate codex. Uh, Puppet Wars, that might that might be it. But, um, Yeah, demons weren't even a separate separate codex, so you know you did things like all those Zinch demons were summoned from your Thousand Suns units, and greater demons were popping out of your aspiring champions, things like that. It's fun. I also remember they had possessed marines at that time, so I had a whole squad of possessed marines that were painted up. I kit bashed them between uh, Space Marine sets and. Uh, the zombies from Warhammer. So they were sort of zombified space marines. And then I painted them all up in various chapter colors from the normal space marines, like ultramarines and uh, iron fists, stuff like that. The idea being they, that demons had sort of possessed the good guy marines and forced them to fight for the bad guys. That's my idea. It looked pretty cool. I had lots of battle damage on the armor. You know, figuring these guys weren't really worrying about keeping their armor nice and tip top shape after they became possessed. Like one guy had sort of like heavy bolter fire like all across his chest with the. like the sort of half holes and the paint chipping away and things. It was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, it's since once I, I kind of got out of that game and sold that army, so it was about eight years ago or so, eight or nine years ago. Started playing other games and they weren't really, um, weren't really sci-fi focused. War, War Machine was the main game I played afterwards and War Machine sort of a steampunk. There's a little bit of sci-fi element to it, but my my faction was the Trollbloods, which was a little bit more fantasy focused. So, so there's a question. I kind of half saw it. Um, do I have a preference between fantasy or sci-fi stuff to paint? Definitely fantasy. Um, not. I don't really like to paint vehicles guns, things like that. I, From the time I was a kid, I loved knights and medieval things. Well, sci-fi is okay, but 
given the preference, I'm always more of a fantasy guy, both in terms of things like, you know, reading books or playing games. And so for that reason, I just always feel a little bit more inspired when I paint fantasy stuff. Uh, I think, you know, when you're painting fantasy things, you can really be inspired by a lot of medieval, like, um, you know, the, like tapestries and robes and fancy heraldry and all that kind of stuff. And when I love to do freehand, so all of that kind of stuff is really, really cool to me. Um, you know, sci-fi, I mean, it doesn't have to be, but it tends to have a more cold sort of feel to everything. Um, it's just not as, not as much my thing. How about you guys? What's what's your favorite um, genre or game manufacturer or type of model that you like to paint? And I also turned off the the blocker that was keeping people from posting links. So by all means, if you have pictures of your stuff posted somewhere, you want other people in the stream to check it out, um, go ahead and post a link to it. I'll probably, ch I'll, I'll definitely check it out too, but I will probably uh, wait till the end of the stream to go do that. Yeah, I, I feel you, Printable Heroes and, and Painting Troll. Yeah, I used to do SCA stuff back in, I guess it was 2001, 2002, somewhere around that time. Um, yeah, that was fun. But then the local chapter just met so far away from where I lived. We've got our little stream buddy, Diego, is uh, checking out what's going on. There's a Fallout game with minis that's based on the game. That sounds awesome. I saw that I'm adding a little bit of blood red to the deep red. Um, I saw that they, they just did a Kickstarter for a new Hellboy miniatures game.
got to admit, I was pretty tempted. But I have so many unpainted models right now, I'm really trying to make a point of not purchasing any new models in this whole year. Try to make it through a full year without purchasing new models. Um, I will say that I think I'm not going to make it because Atlantis Miniatures, which if anybody has been watching my stream and knows how much I like their models, um, they just announced that they're, they're going to be doing a Kickstarter for uh, their Ogres line. And I saw some of the new renders and like, oh man, they look so good. Such amazing character to them and So, the other question is, I mean, Atlantis Miniatures has been hiring me to paint some of their stuff. And once I get done with this commission, um, I hope you guys like dwarves, because you're about to see a lot more dwarves. <laughs> um, but then after that, uh, there might be some discussion about potentially painting some of their ogres. But I'm always in the quandary because, like, I could sort of hold out and... Just wait and see maybe what he sends me to paint so I don't end up with duplicate stuff, things that I bought and then things he sends me to paint. But on the other hand, I don't want to not buy stuff and then have it, you know, have that not be something he wants me to paint and then miss out because I know sometimes uh, his stock goes pretty quickly. Um, he's not a huge, huge company where he can keep everything in stock all the time, so he just restocks as he can. So I don't know. I'm in a bit of a quandary. I'll probably buy some ogres. So that would probably break my promise, but I'm hoping that's the only models I buy. <laughs> um, hey, Zeon Fish, what's up? Yeah, those ogres, yeah, they're awesome. Um, yeah, I will say the the thing on the ogres, um, I don't think those are final yet. And I know for the dwarves, when he did the Kickstarter, um, he continued to make improvements. If you were to go back and look at the original uh, scribe miniature, for example, that was on the the first like show for the Kickstarter of like when he launched versus the actual final model, there were significant improvements on it. And I think that's true for all of the dwarf miniatures. So I think all of the ogres he's been showing are still work in progress. They're just kind of at a point where he's happy enough to share them, but he's gonna continue to go back and, and refine so I wouldn't be surprised if um, some of those things that you're talking about are actually addressed as um, as time goes on. Yeah, the, in terms of whether he'll have um, some of the UK games, I'm trying to follow this. Um, I doubt they'll have any ogres, if that's what you're talking about, um, because right now, I think everything is just um, renders. He might be printing a few just to see some different scales. And I, I guess he, I suppose he could have some um, like test models there, but... I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't probably. I wouldn't guess he would probably have his ogres there at that. But it sounds like he will be at UK Games Expo though, and uh, I'm really hoping he brings. He should. Hoping he brings the the painted models with him this time. They just. They didn't reach him quite in time for salute this year. We had about a three week. Holden Customs, which was really annoying. So the models got to him like 10 days or so after Salute.
So I, um, I think one of the things, I think what happened was we were going back and forth with how much to insure the package for because um, when I got the Celtic bust cast, the package that then got shipped out of the UK was completely destroyed and had to be, they had to recast all of the busts. And so I was a little nervous about sending such an important package, like these painted dwarfs, to him without having any protection for the two of us, you know, for my time and for his investment. So we were kind of going back and forth and we, we ended up deciding to do, to ensure the, the shipment for the full value. And so I think that the, the value on the package, I think caused customs to spend more time processing the, the shipment. Because I sent the second shipment to him, then we just said, well, let's just send that one first class and you know not really insure it and everything. And it got shipped several weeks later and got to him only a couple days after the first package. So, well, so it's kind of one of those things like if we, if we were willing to, willing to take the risk, then we can get there faster. But I don't know. Always a little bit of a gamble. Yeah, we're coming up soon on doing those, the paint along, the Celtic busts. Um, I had a couple more orders from Europe um, this weekend, actually. So I want to make sure that there's enough time to get those shipments. It takes a couple weeks to get to people, plus just my work schedule is so crazy right now. I don't want to. I don't want to commit to starting on a date when I end up having to to backtrack a little bit. So, um, so late June is probably going to be the time where I can definitely uh, commit. So it might still be a couple more weeks, but we'll see. Uh, I'm thinking what I'm what I'll do to start is to just record a brief like a brief maybe 30 minute video that's not live but I just recorded in the same setup but I talk about things like um, preparing the miniature cleaning it up um, choices of primer um, kind of how to attach it to something to paint or options for buying plinths and just kind of an overview for for people who if they're maybe a little bit newer into modeling in in general or just painting busts in particular. I'll talk a little bit about some of the, like what paint colors you might wanna get. And so it would be kind of a, just a video to whet everybody's appetite a little bit, but also let everybody get started. And so that when we get to that first paint along session, everybody's raring to go. We're all in the same place. We've all got our minis ready. They're all primed and uh, ready to go. So I'm gonna record one of the, that video and then release it first and then schedule the first official day and give everybody a little bit of a chance to prep their minis. Yeah, if customs if customs wants to be agreeable to you, um, you can definitely get things there quick. Uh, but it's such it's just such a crapshoot sometimes. shipped a model. Somebody bought one of the models from my personal collection, which by the way, if you're at all interested in that, you can go to my website. There's a 
page called for sale. So anything that's just in my display cabinet here at my house, it's all, all for sale. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's like a serious comment. I don't think there's anything that, that's in my cabinet that's not on there. Um, but anyway, he bought one of those models and he lives in Germany and the tracking and, you know, assuming the tracking was correct, but tracking showed it going landing in Germany and then going on to like Romania, sitting in customs in Romania for two and two about two to two and a half weeks, and then finally getting back to Germany and to him. And he's like, I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> the only thing I can think of is, I don't know if there is some hub because of the EU. I don't know if there's some hub where in the continental Europe, every all the packages kind of go through these regional hubs. But it seems odd that a package would land in Germany and then get forwarded to a different country for processing. But I don't really know much about how that system's working. Hey, that's that's a bold move there, painting troll. I, I think you'll like it. It's just take a little getting used to, but uh, I really love the colors and the matte finish there. Definitely my my go-to paints right now. That might be why it sat there for so long. They're like, why why is this package here? This is not our package, this is not our problem. But the happy ending though is he finally got the model. He was thrilled with it. He loved it. So everything worked out in the end. It was just a little frustrating. So right now I'm kind of visually focusing on, or trying to visualize how the, I have in my head sort of how the model's going together and the positioning. So I'm trying to kind of think about where I want the light spots based on that image.
as of right now, I only use airbrush for priming. Um, I did use it a little bit for some of the initial layering on that large Etten that I did at one point. Um, and I know airbrushes can make some of this go faster, but I'm also not confident yet with my ability to have that kind of control. Um, and it's kind of a catch-22. Like, I don't have that much painting time. Like, I don't feel like I can devote a bunch of time to practicing even though I know in the long run it would speed things up, but in the short run, it would slow down the, the projects I really have to get done. The other thing is just out of personal taste, I'm not, I don't really love the super airbrush look. Um, like everything's just a little too clean, a little too smooth. And I realized that a really, really talented airbrusher can avoid that. But I, again, I don't think that my airbrushing skills are, are up to that point yet to where I could airbrush it and not make it feel airbrushed. Because I, again, I don't, I don't really like the airbrush look. I also think that, because you're saying it's about style, I will admit that I think I'm a little, I'm probably a little biased because of sort of what the famous airbrushers out there do. People like Angel Geraldez, the guy who does all the Infinity models. I mean, he uses an airbrush in a very, very particular way. Not everyone who uses an airbrush uses it to create such high... Con uh, high contrast styles, but that's kind of what I mentally associate with airbrushing. And I don't really love that. And this, at least that's not what I try to achieve with my painting. And so there's just a little bit of a sort of a bias against really having a desire to pick an airbrush up and really learn how to use it because I feel like well I just make my stuff look like that and I don't really want that look even though I consciously know that's not quite true
So here locally, the Phoenix used to be Phoenix Comic Con, but now Phoenix Comic Fest, because the San Diego Comic Con, I think, uh, won some lawsuit, copyright lawsuit or something for using Comic Con, but. But the Phoenix Comic Fest was this weekend, which is a, one of the country's larger conventions for all that stuff. A lot of the people locally here who are all gamers and hobbyists spent a bunch of time there this weekend. But I haven't really heard a lot. I don't know if anything big got announced or released or... I don't know. Anybody hear of any, any big news from this weekend? Another 50 Kickstarters, yeah. Cool mini or not. I sort of feel like they're one of the big reasons that uh, part of the big Kickstarter backlash against companies. Like they just feel like such a big player who just is using Kickstarter for their as a pre-order system, essentially. I really wonder sometimes what, like what's Kickstarter gonna look like in five years? Is it still going to be around? Is it just going to be completely all pre-orders from major companies and smaller companies can't even get recognized there? I don't know. I certainly think when it comes to our hobby, it's kind of strayed away from its original purpose. I don't know about other hobbies or other avenues that use Kickstarter. I've never pursued Kickstarter to look for anything else other than hobby stuff. So I don't know if the same thing is happening in video games. Is the same thing happening in I don't know, any other industry that uses Kickstarter? Yeah, that's true, Painting Troll. It's becoming saturated with minis because of all the the companies doing board games with a ton, a ton of minis. And so...
two Kickstarters every month for Blood Bowl teams. Lots of uh, independent companies doing Blood Bowl teams. I know that I saw the Halflings one. Because I think Stavros sculpted those, the guy who sculpted the Celtic busts that I have. I have to admit I haven't seen a lot of others, but I I try to stay away from new miniatures announcements and Kickstarter stuff these days. You can see my previous comments about trying not to, to buy minis this year. So I am definitely out of the loop. Are they doing teams that are they, like GW doesn't make, or is it just people trying to put out alternative sculpts essentially? Back a Kickstarter, you'll get you'll get your minis in three years, a hundred of them. Yeah. You know, it's a little funny to me. Just kind of popped into my head was, I feel like some of the. Some of the complaints from game stores about Kickstarter when it first came out was things like, well, you, you know, a lot of the, the initial Kickstarters didn't really have good retail support. It was just kind of a bunch of players who were pre-ordering the game. And then after the fact, there wasn't, even if stores would stock the game, it wasn't necessarily a big moneymaker for the stores because all of the people who like to spend their money at those stores had already bought the thing through Kickstarter so they weren't buying it again so then a lot of that Kickstarter stuff just would sit on their their shelves but what's funny is a lot of the independent retailers first started feeling a pinch when models started getting sold online because people could buy models for cheaper online so they would buy them online and then they would come into the store and play. The store was providing all this space but not getting the money from the model sales. And, this, and especially as it got to the point where people could get things shipped to them relatively quickly, there wasn't, you know, the stores always had, well, you can purchase it right away rather than wait, but if you wait a little bit you get it for cheaper. Now people are buying things on Kickstarter and it's not even just a matter of a few days, but it's like three years difference. I know I was guilty of... I, I had in the past where I gotten a Kickstarter box in the mail and I was like oh yeah I didn't I forgot I backed this I don't think I don't think I'm alone in having had that happen it's one of the reasons I'm trying to not get on there anymore man that that's what really messed me up I didn't really quite realize how many models I was purchasing once I purged when I sold my troll bloods, I also purged a lot of my unpainted models. 
I got down to only about a dozen models that I owned that were unpainted. And I thought, you know, man, I'm going to be really good. I'm just going to buy what I'm going to paint. But that's kind of when I got into Kickstarter backing. And before you know it, you can easily back projects where you have way more models than you realize you just purchased. And that's where I'm at now. I got way too many unpainted models again. I was getting down to the last of my paint in my well. I wasn't doing a good job of keeping it mixed. So that part went on a little, a little interesting. Luckily, a lot of that panel is going to get covered with freehand details. That's cool, getting a, a zombie bust and paint them up like Red Skull. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm. That's also one of the things too. Like some of these Kickstarters, where you know there's some really cool minis, but then it's really easy to overbuy when you know maybe you only really needed one or two of those to paint, as long as you're not like buying it for a full army. But then some of that kind of gets out of control, like. You know, they had that Kickstarter for Harry Potter um, a couple months ago. And that was probably the closest I've actually come this year to, to purchasing models. But ultimately, all I really wanted was maybe half a dozen of the models. You know, like Harry and Hermione and Ron and then just a, a handful of other ones. But the, the main guys were all just in the core box you couldn't buy them separately now maybe one day you can buy them separately but right now they're all just in the core box and i wasn't going to pay like 80 or 100 or 120 dollars whatever it was for uh, the core box just to get a couple models because i doubt i'll ever play the game
Yeah, I heard some other things about the Harry Potter thing too, that there were licensing issues and all sorts of stuff that came in at the last minute that forced them to change what they were doing. I, I don't really know the whole story. I just know, like, just personally, I just had no interest in paying two or three hundred dollars and buying all in on on a game I didn't really expect to play, and then. So it was pretty easy knowing I only wanted those few models. And then when it came, pushed came to shove of do I really want to spend that much money for the, the couple models I wanted? And then I was like, nope, I'm trying to avoid buying models. So it was kind of easy to say no. But if they start selling them in single, um, just single blisters, eventually I might go back and, and get a couple. But I saw you sent that you put the link on there for the zombie head. I'll definitely go and check that out later. I think you're right about that. There were certain models that were in the pre-order that were only in the pre-order. But again, will you ever be able to buy a Harry Potter separate from the, the box set? I don't know. Well, you notice that, huh? <laughs> it's almost like uh, I've got some go-to tricks. Yeah, he's, for, if the chat's not gonna be up in a future video, so Painting Troll said that he went back and watched my Space Marine tutorial because he wanted to get my skin tone recipe off of that. And then he was re-watching it, he was writing down it all, and then he realized that I, I did a tutorial for how I did some dwarves. And uh, it's the exact same skin recipe, so yeah. Uh, the one thing I did on the, the Space Marine is I I didn't go quite, uh, I, I changed one little thing up a little bit, I think, near the end, but it's just a, just a tiny, subtle variation on it. But um, 
Yeah, that's kind of my go-to skin recipe. But what I'll do is when I go to the glazes at the end, because I pretty much use the same base for all Caucasian type skin tone. Do the same layering and all of that stuff. Then how I will change change it in subtle ways is with the the glazes that I'll then do and the shadowing. Um, so I can go for a more like pinkish toned skin, I can go for a more orangish toned skin or a more brownish or grayish, just based on how the mix is that I use for the glazes. But the actual layers that I use to build up is pretty much identical every time. So yeah, I have a PDF of that. Um, if anybody messages me and sends me their email address, I can email you the, the PDF. But it's also just on my blog. Again, if you go to my website, it's just on my blog. Um, I believe Atlantis Miniatures is going to end up sharing the PDF at some point. Um, he wanted to clean up a few pictures that he had given me for that because I just pulled them off of his website and the, the quality on the website is pretty condensed. So he wanted to have the higher resolution images. Um, but he's been busy with the, the dwarf kick or the ogre Kickstarter getting that ready and, and also the launch of dwarves. So he's been a little busy. But that'll get out. I think he's going to share it with all the Kickstarter backers for dwarves. Probably have it on his website somewhere. Um, I'm also doing a tutorial for the Troll Slayer, the, the female Troll Slayer with the troll heads that she's standing on. Um, I have that about halfway typed up, but I've just been myself too busy to finish it. And also I'm trying to prioritize my little time I do have is trying to prioritize getting this model done because uh, Packed Team has been ever so patient for this. Uh, this was actually supposed to be the model I painted back when I started the dwarves, but he graciously allowed them to go first, um, which was really nice of him. So I'm trying as much as I can to get this to him in a reasonable time frame. Did the print method. Oh, so you print you printed it off on um, from my website and it did that. Or are you talking about when you printed the PDF that I sent you? Okay, so that method, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of ways to make my website work better than it does. Um, I'm not a programmer, just using the, you know, the basic templates and things that these website makers do. Um, since I'm not trying to really earn a living from 
miniature painting. It's just kind of a, a resource for people. But yeah, if I was if I was doing this full time, I would definitely get that all of that stuff working a lot better. But in the meantime, if you want the PDF that everything was originally based off of, which is essentially just done in a Word document and printed to PDF. Um, Send me a message on Twitter, Facebook, uh, through the contact form on my website, any of those, those methods of contacting me. And I'd be happy to send you a copy of the, the nice PDF. It's also got both parts to it, so it has the the dwarf part, and then it also has all of the kind of just general comments, things about glazing, shading, color, all of that stuff. But yeah, the Troll Slayer one, if I had to guess, I would say sometime in Uh, late June or July, I'll have that one. And same thing, I'll I'll put it on my website in the blog section, but I'll also have a PDF version. That once you see that get posted, if you want the PDF of the Troll Slayer, just email me. I'm happy to share it. I don't know if you guys feel the same way when you're painting with red or not, but like I always feel like um, you know somebody walking by will think that we just had a terrible hobby knife accident. Um, <laughs> they look at get the paper towel.
the paper towel looks like it died from a thousand cuts. You know they have these things like uh, the Great Courses Plus and you know things where you can do independent learning um, throughout your life and they'll have people come on and do lectures or you can take just distance learning courses not for any credit there's not any homework but you're just like you know taking lessons to learn things. I would love to learn about like pigments and like the science and history behind um, like paint pigment and you know what what they what they use for what what they use in paints to do the pigments, what the, just the whole history of that. It's something I really don't know anything about, and yet it seems kind of central to what I, what I spend a lot of my time doing. I wonder if there's a book out there. Oh, by the way, Painting Troll, you just um, got a new logo for your social media and stuff, right? Taringa Tunes, or however you pronounce it, uh, made it for you. Yeah, that's it. It's really cool. I really like it. I just wanted to let you know that. Yeah, but I approve of you know the the big cartoon beastie. Uh, imagery, painting little miniatures. I like it. The club that's a paintbrush. Oops. I have not been doing this little heel. His Achilles heel armor. Space Marines learned from the Trojan War.
that's kind of funny. I have a very similar uh, goal in mind. I'm gonna. I've been really thinking about getting some T-shirts made. Maybe a couple nicer polos. Um, so I'm actually going to start going to some conventions again. Uh, I don't plan on doing any painting competitions. That's just really not my thing. Um, but uh, this year I'm going to go to PAX Unplugged, Blues Light Painting, who's on here from time to time is a good friend of mine. Um, he convinced me to come with him, so that's in Philadelphia. Uh, right, Philadelphia, yeah, uh, later in the year. And so we're going to go to that together. Um, so that'll be fun. And next year, I might be going to Gen Con. But we'll see. And there's could be a lot more about that. So that's a long way off. I'll leave you in suspense. But, but yeah, I'm going to start going. So I was thinking about getting some, some shirts made so that people can recognize me and either come up and throw things at me if they don't like me or come up and say hi and shake my hand if they want to meet me. I was thinking I would probably have some nicer polos, maybe an embroider the logo or something like that on them. Um, and maybe at the same time, also get some t-shirts made and have those t-shirts available for sale. Because one of the things that was interesting was when I was doing those dice bags, I had about three or four people reach out to me and say, well, I don't want a dice bag, but I would totally buy a shirt from you. I'm like, why would anybody want a shirt with my logo on it? But I guess maybe some people out there would like that. I guess I never really thought about that. Um, so I might get some t-shirts made and kind of do um, maybe something similar to the dice bags, although I, I can't always like do all the outlay for the, the money. So it might be something like 50% uh, of the t-shirt sales go to charity and 50% come back to me to sort of cover the cost of making the t-shirts. Um, so I might do something like that and have a t-shirt with the Gorilla logo on it. So there you go, man. Another one. Painty Troll wants a t-shirt. Okay, I guess I'm going to have to make these. Probably what, probably what I'll do um, when it comes time to do it, I'll kind of put out a, not exactly a pre-order, I don't know that I'll take people's money at that time, but sort of a reserve. Like, hey, if you want a shirt, you want to make sure I have your size available, let me know what your size is, and then kind of make sure everybody's covered who is pre-buying or pre-reserving and then just get a few a smattering of a few extras from other sizes and see if then get enough get more people who want them I'm sure there's kind of a minimum order where it makes sense to order the t-shirts price point wise
do a full character of the troll. I feel like I, maybe I didn't see it. Maybe you didn't share it. For some reason, I feel like I saw the big full picture. Maybe I'm just thinking of your logo though. I was really tempted. Maybe if I can track down the guy. Um, I went through fiverr.com for my, my logo originally. Um, but I paid a little bit more to have full commercial rights and everything to it. But if I can track the same guy down, I kind of thought it would be really funny to get some headers made for my my like Twitter and Facebook. So rather than, this is still something I'm like kicking around in my head, rather than have painted models up there, have sort of a cartoon studio, like a painting studio, and have it be full of chimpanzees that are all like supposed to be kind of working in the painting studio for the gorilla, but doing more like damage than actual painting so like two monkeys in a paint fight somebody else who's like i don't know just just kind of hilarious monkeys doing monkey things in the background um as like a, a header for the social media stuff but have it done in a similar style to my gorilla um, i kind of thought that would be funny but i don't know I go back and forth a little bit. It's kind of nice to have examples of my work on the main page too, so I don't know. I suppose if I really wanted to do that, I could also find a, an illustrator through some of my Twitter community who thinks they could probably replicate the style pretty well, especially because they don't actually have to draw the gorilla again, just something that's sort of in a similar style. A bunch of chimpanzees making trouble.
So I think you you said it maybe a couple times. Yeah, the UK Games Expo is on Saturday. Um, cool. I'm definitely going to check that out. Um, actually, I'll probably... You want me to share it on the stream? I can show it on my my uh, my phone. I think so. I I think it's really cool. I really like it. I feel like these two guys like would be buddies, you know. I'm not sure I would really trust them to uh, paint display quality miniatures, either one of them, but um... <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Oh, he did a great job. I like the paint pots around the the neck, and I also like how he's got paint on his uh, his beard. I think that's awesome. I really like it. Um, anyway, oh, I was gonna start talking about the UK Games Expo. So, yeah, that's awesome. I. I'm sort of starting to get into that itch to get back to conventions and you know get back out there and meet people and see people there. I just got I don't know. I'm not always the most social with people. I'm a little bit more of an introvert type and so sometimes the convention scene really burns me out. So I kind of avoided it for a while there, but I think I'm ready to get back out there. But yeah, I I think Atlantis Ministries is going to be there. It sounded like it. So definitely go give them a huge hello from me. Um, good people over there. And any of the other companies. Uh, you know, if Scale 75 is there. If just, just share the love, man. Tell them all I said hello and I love them. Fair enough. He'll show the love, but he'll hold off on the hugs. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit the same. You said you're kind of an introvert in the sense you don't force yourself to be social, but you know that you're okay being out. And that, I mean, that's kind of my thing too. I'm. It's not like I'm completely like hide from people, but. I do tend to find myself shutting down a little bit when the, the crowd gets too big. You know, if I'm in a room and there's 10, 20 people in there, I tend to be the guy who'll just sort of shrink back a little bit and let everybody else be the center of attention. But a nice group of four to six people, and that's kind of ideal for me. All right, well, it's been about two hours. I think I'm gonna take a, a small break and then come back up, come back, uh, keep doing these layers of red. Hopefully get the red all done today. And um, yeah, once the red is done, 
then it's a matter of doing the the brass bronze sections starting to do all the freehand and adding that stuff in and then finishing up on the little details like pistons and all the other little stuff that's on there but His job requires him to be social, but he doesn't like a lot of people generally. So if he has time off, he'd rather spend it at home. I, yeah, that, that about sums it up. <laughs> um, yeah, that's funny. All right, guys. Um, I might actually even just take a nap. I don't know. I'm, it's been a long few weeks. Um, I really appreciate you guys stopping by today. Uh, as always, um, I've been saying it some on Twitter today. I mean, I always, I always say thank you for joining me on the stream, but um, it really is true that, you know, you guys commenting on my tweets or, you know, commenting on my Facebook posts, liking them, sharing them, uh, being here for the stream, interacting with me on stream, um, it really is motivating to me to know that there's people out there who appreciate the stuff that I'm doing, um, that are getting use out of it. It keeps me motivated to keep going, keeps me energized, keeps me excited to paint and and show off the next big thing. So uh, you guys mean a lot to me. I really appreciate it. Um, hopefully you'll join me in the next stream. Hopefully you'll participate in the paint along. Um, you know, it could be a good opportunity to really try some things you've never tried before, push yourself and um, learn some new things. So uh, anyway, until next time, have a great week, guys. I will see you around. Thanks.